Hey there, it is Tom Stryker here on behalf of Indie Structural Productions with another scum build video. Now, in quite the contrast to uh, last week, this one is going to be a little bit of a shorter one. And uh, we're jumping back. As you can see, the back inlay is not in place because this took part in between part one and part two of the inlay process. Didn't make sense to, as I explained in the previous video, didn't make sense to put this in between, so here we are. Carving the neck. So this was the weekend off that, uh, or, you know, weekend where I was working from home. And yeah, just basically refining that neck shape. I had roughed it down to a certain size and a certain shape already prior to this. Uh, that was just to kind of get it close. And that was still when we weren't quite sure about what thickness or shape we wanted the neck at. So now that we do know that, it's much easier for me to continue and make it into the right shape um, being a little bit thinner than what it was. It was fairly chunky when I started this process. And using my favorite tools, spoke shaves, uh, that do need to be sharpened. There was a little bit of cross grain so that kind of affected things a bit. And I'm using the calipers just to get the right thickness on the 12th and on the first frets. I think what I was aiming for was 20 to 23. So 20 millimeters on the first fret and 23 on the 12th. That was what I was aiming for. And yeah, pulling the spoke shaves as one would actually carve or shape a spoke. Kind of makes sense now, doesn't it? I could be taking off a lot less, but you know, it was cutting pretty well. And it gets to the volute, and around that area anyways, um, just using a uh, rasp to kind of carve out that area. And in general, just to kind of smooth out some of the rough edges. Lovely, lovely weekend. Gorgeous weather outside, but I'm indoors building guitars, watching Mythbusters as you do. Then uh, working on the heel. Now, I wish I had an uh, angle grinder to do this job because that would be so quick, so easy, but alas, I do not. So I had to whittle away for a very long time. The thing is that this would be a lot easier if I had some good chisels at hand. So I would use those and a carving mallet to kind of carve out the heel and then finish it off with spoke shaves and rasps and stuff like that. That would be so much easier. But uh, I'm working with what I got. It was a long process, but I had a lot of time to kill, so why not? This rasp is definitely one of my favorite rasps ever. One of my grandfather's old ones. It's really, really good. Uh, quite literally, it's just refining. Very, very straightforward. Yeah, you can see they're in the middle of the back inlay spot. I did try to originally go about the whole process with the prox on, but that would have taken forever due to the small bits. So I just, yeah, I left it at that. And as you saw in the previous video, just used a proper router and a good template to do the job. Not the most ergonomic, you know, 
pose or work environment, but uh, it does do the job quite well. Besides, I'm used to that by now. Then back at the workshop, it's time to sand, sand, sand. So this is now continuing off from last week's video. The back inlay is in place and I am ready to sand everything down. So this is where I start sanding things to about 320. I'm not going all the way to 320 just yet because next up I need to do the belly carve. So now I'm just pretty sure 180ing all that glue away and evening out the uh, back inlay. I think I might have switched out to uh, 120 there as well. Now the same pretty much the same process except now doing the belly carve. This is where working with Moranti is so nice because it's so easy to carve. I did once again run into a little bit of cross grain that was a little bit bothersome but yeah. So a good way of actually doing belly carves is yes draw it on the back of the guitar the basic shape that you want to go for but also then join that up with a line on the side so that you know which depth to go for. Then you have two points and you're basically just connecting those into pretty much whatever angle that then becomes. And uh, yeah, I'm just using the spoke shave to do most of the work. It's by far easier. And uh, yeah, again realizing I could have used the angle grinder for this. But you know, hindsight, always always 2020. Don't have too much experience with angle grinder, so I think that might have been part of why I was steering away from that. And besides, I like working with my tools. I like my spoke shape and I like my rasp. Somebody already called my neck carving to be a little bit more of a zen approach um, in one of the previous videos. And uh, yeah, I, I can kind of see that. Same thing here, I would have been able to do this in a much easier way, but I'm doing it in a way that is nice for me. It's a bit therapeutic this way. I also went ahead and uh, borrowed a Shinto saw rasp from the uh, production department because that definitely takes away a lot more stuff than my rasps and uh, spoke shapes do. So basically I just go ahead and I use these three tools to get the basic shape out. I just got the Shinto rasp because things were moving a bit too slow and this just gets rid of the material very very quickly. And due to the shape of it, it's also very easy for me to keep that angle straight. Realizing how long it's going to take me, but yeah, I don't mind. course what comes after all the carving is sanding uh, so that's gonna be in the next clip I think but yeah now I'm just smoothing things out with my spoke shave because uh, it does leave a much nicer cut than uh, rasps would. Anywho the, um, this video is gonna wrap up fairly soon so thank you very much for watching, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this little bit shorter of, shorter of video in this series, and uh, click that like button, it helps out a whole lot, click that little bell to get notifications on new videos, which also really does help me out quite a bit, and uh, subscribe to see more if you haven't already, and uh, yeah, I will... See you guys next week. Alrighty, bye-bye.